Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley, and today I want to show you a new plugin called Patty. This plugin solves a very old problem having dynamic buttons that change size depending on the text value. So you have a short text, and the button becomes smaller. You have a long text, and then the button becomes bigger. Sounds simple, right? Well, there hasn't been a really good solution for this for the longest time, but this plugin actually solves it. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is, well, install the plugin. So to install the plugin, just uh, go to github.com and I'm adding the link in the description and you just download the plugin and go, like, it's just like any other plugin, double click, install. Actually, if you want to, you can stop this video and just read all of these instructions. This person actually was really good at describing all the little details about this plugin here. And it's like a giant tutorial. So if you prefer just reading the instructions, I would recommend just going here. But if you prefer watching a video, well then stay with me and I'll show you all the little tricks. Okay, so once you have installed the plugin, then you can start using it. And I have here some examples that uh, of what you can do with this plugin. I think uh, probably what you want to see is this, a button. So a button, uh, right now, this is actually a symbol uh, and it has a, a text label. And if I change the text label to something else, something else, a little bit uh, bigger. Did you see that? Did you just see what happened? <laughs> it just grew automatically, automatically it adapted uh, the padding of the, uh, well, the size of the button adapted because I have already determined the padding. I'm going to show you in a little bit, but I, I just want to show you this. The, the, I just want to show you how it works. This is so cool. This is so cool. Look at that. I click out and then it changes. Something else that I find really cool is that this works not only with just the shape, but also works with symbols. That allows us to actually use nested symbols uh, and use them as a background. And when you use nested symbols as a background in a button, then you can change the color of it. So for example, this one, we change it to a different color. Okay, so let's create our first button. Let me show you how you actually do it. I have here two layers just to demo. It's just a text layer in a rectangle. It's just two normal layers. So the first thing that I want to do is turn these into a group. So I just group them. And once they are in a group, I can go to plugins and then go to Patty and then padding for selection. Or you can also go control option P and then it will bring this user input. And this, this will be a little bit confusing if you don't know CSS. But if you already know CSS, this is going to be a little bit easier. Let me explain to you what are the numbers that you enter here. So the first number that you enter applies to the top and to the bottom, the padding that you want to apply on the top and of the bottom. And the second number is going to be the padding that you apply on the left and on the right. So that's it. Those are the two numbers that you need. If you want to have a specific paddings on the left and on the right and on the top from the bottom, then you can say, for example, instead of 10, 20, then you say 10, 8 and 10, 16. This will mean that on the top is 10 pixels, right is 20, bottom is 8 and left is 16. That's how it goes clockwise. So top, right, bottom, left. It just goes like this, right? Uh, but you, you usually don't do this. So you usually only need two numbers. You m sometimes you even need only one number. One number will say padding consistent across all sides. But if you want a padding different on the top from the bottom, then you do two numbers and that way you get top, bottom and left and right. <laughs> and I've been talking too much and not showing you. Let me just, let's just do it. There you go. 10 and 20 gives you this result. And you will see that here on the group, it was added this input to the rectangle. 
So it will detect the uh, layer that is in the bottom and then it will create this as the container of your group, the container that is having the panning. So for example, here I can go here and apply these changes to the name of the layer. So instead of now, instead of 10, I actually want it to be eight pixels on the top and on the bottom, and then six pixels on the left and on the right. So I apply those changes and then I click outside and see how it was changed automatically. And let's check it if it actually happened. So you can see eight pixels on the top and the bottom, 16 pixels on the left and on the right. That's pretty cool. Let's change it again. And let's say that it's 16 here and then 24 top and bottom. There you go. Now we have a big button and let's check it. There you go. 16, 16, 24, 24. Okay, so now let's test it and actually let's change the text label. So something else, something else. And there you go. It, it got a little bit bigger. Let's make it, uh, let's make it auto. There you go. Let's, uh, let's change the text label to hello, my darling. There you go. And then <laughs> this thing just resizes. It's, it's like magic. It's pretty cool. Now this thing can be also turned into a symbol and as a symbol, it will act the same. So let's actually turn this into a symbol. I'm going to call it uh, button slash test. Just adding this as a test button. There you go. Now that it's a test button, let's actually change the label. Change the label long. So I change the label and look at that. This is a, this is a symbol and it's reacting. And it's pretty cool. If I go back here, I can always go back. If I want my padding to be different, instead of 16 and by 24, I want it to be different. I can go back, change it eight. Let's say that eight and 16, let's change it back to that. And see, now I change that. All I have to do now is change the size of my uh, symbol to the size of this. So I can just say over here, select the artboard and say resize to fit that way my symbol will not be bigger than the actual content. So I can actually change this to label because this should be label. There you go. And let's do this again, resize to fit, I return to instance, and there you go. This, uh, this changes automatically. It's, it's okay because the padding is still there. This is really cool. Uh, 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 something else, let me just show you how this is constructed. Uh, here, I'm actually following the same uh, uh, components of any other library where uh, this is a color, this is a shape and a color. So this is a nested symbol. And I'm, I'm applying here, you will see here all of these. Actually, these are nested symbols. This is not a rectangle. This is uh, actually follow, uh, it's, it's pulling the shape. If I double click, you will see that it has a shape and it has a color. I have different colors over here. I have a, a set of, uh, uh, of colors. And these colors are inside the shape. Uh, and if you don't know how to do this, I have another video that explains my uh, my process creating buttons. But the cool thing here, what we, uh, what I really like about this, is that you can apply these rules to symbols too. It doesn't have to be a rectangle only, as long as it has these uh, these things on your name uh, between these uh, the little brackets, uh, then you're good. Pretty cool. You can also apply this to not just buttons, but for example, cards for elements that have multiple elements. So here, for example, I have this, this is a card and this card, I want to have a consistent uh, padding around my elements. So here I have 16 on the top, 16 on the bottom, 24 on the left and 24 on the right. If I were to change the size of this, let me uh, make this a little bit, uh, move this and Hello, my friends. Let's do another line, another line. I click outside and then it resizes. And then it resizes back like this too. This is very similar to the auto layout plugin. If you have used this, then you're going to find that this is very similar to that plugin. The only thing is that the difference is that the plugin as well is not here. You actually control over here uh, in, in a very light way uh, uh, these uh, elements, and then you can just apply more elements. For example, if I add another element, 
then you'll see that my background reacts and the padding is consistent. It's still 16 pixels, 16 pixels, and 24, 24. Something that Auto Layer plugin doesn't do is shrink down. I haven't been able to do it to make it shrink down. This actually does it. If I if I were to remove this, then my layer in the background actually shrinks down. Did it not shrink down? Yeah, there you go. It shrinked down. So let's actually do this here. So I'm going to create one rectangle over here. I'm going to put it all the way to the bottom. I'm going to uh, let's add a little bit of, of around the corners just to make it look nice. And I'm going to create a group with all these elements. And then I'm going to go to plugins, patty, padding for selection. And then I'm going to say that it's uh, 24 on the top and on the bottom. And let's say 32 on the left and on the right. I apply this and this should be 24. 24. Now, if I move it over here, probably I want to align these, probably my photo like that. Let's say that everything is centered and probably the text is also centered. There you go. So now this should be 24. Yeah, 24. If I were to add another text layer over here, I add another text layer and look at that. It grew. <laughs> so cool. And if I want to remove the text layer, it would shrink down. Yeah, there you go. It's, oh my God, this is so cool. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Uh, this also works, for example, uh, on Ellen. This was like a, a, a very specific, it has a padding here, has a padding here. But sometimes you want to do something like this, where the element doesn't have a padding on the top. So to do that uh, here, the element is actually, I put zero on the top. You will see here on the naming convention, zero on the top zero on the left and on the right, and only padding on the bottom. That will allow me to do this kind of uh, element. So here I have this guy, and if I were to move this a little bit bigger, then you will see that the background actually changes. So this is just to, uh, let's actually do it over here. Let's, uh, let's create a rectangle. Let's create a rectangle that is going to be the container. Let's put her over here. Let's do the same as before. Uh, let's uh, let's group this, and I'm going to go to plugins, patty, patty for selection. I'm going to say that zero on the top, zero on the left, and on the right. Uh, that way, the image doesn't have a padding. And then I'm going to say it's 24 on the bottom. And there you go. Now I can just center these guys, and it should be good. If I want to make this a little bit bigger, then my element actually grows. Uh, if I want to make this a little bit closer to my title, probably should be a little bit closer, then my background automatically shrinks down. And and that's it. That's, that's pretty dope, right? Uh, something else that does like auto, uh, uh, like that does a spacing a lot like auto layout uh, with the stacks function. This is, uh, it. I, I will say, by the way, this functions, I still think that auto layout makes it a little bit better, the stacks option, but uh, I don't know, if you want to keep playing with this, then you can start nerding out on adding some more elements that this plugin gives you. So for example here, all these guys are all have a, a same padding between them. All this are have up 20 pixels between them. So let's see, 20 pixels, 20 pixels. And this is applied to a group. To the group, you apply this uh, kind of code, uh, these kind of uh, properties. So the properties will say, what is the spacing that you want to give and what is the direction? So uh, it, it, the direction can be vertical or horizontal. So let's, so for example, here on this elements, uh, the, the, the space in between is, is 20 vertical. So if I were to change it to, for example, 16 pixels vertical, then you see now the space in between the elements is 16 pixels. If I were to make this a little bit bigger, then the elements will just uh, get into place to be 16 pixels between them. Let's say that I make this a little bit smaller and then the elements again just get in place so the elements are, have a padding of, of 16 pixels between them. Let's do that over here. I'm going to duplicate these elements over here just to have plenty of elements. 
and I'm going to group all of these elements. And then here on the naming convention of this, I'm going to add the first parameter, which is the distance between them. I'm going to say that it's eight pixels and then it's vertical. I'm going to press enter. And then now the spacing between them is eight pixels. Cool, right? Now let's say that uh, I'm going to make this a smaller, just a little bit uh, smaller. Now let's say that I want them to be horizontal, that I want the, the position between them still eight pixels of padding, but horizontal. All I have to do is instead of V, I change it to H. And now the spacing between them is horizontal. Uh, uh, so it, it looks kind of weird because they're not really aligned. Uh, and we're going to learn how to align them. But the spacing between them, you will see that it's eight pixels. So I can just align them if I wanted to. And you will see it's eight pixels between them. Now, there are ways to align it also with this little <laughs> with little codes here. So for example, here, uh, uh, you will see that I, I probably want to align all of these. And these are the co codes that you can use on your naming conventions too. You can press, uh, you can add L to align to the left. C to align to the center, R for right, T for top, N for middle, and so on. So for example, all of these, I'm going to create a group, and I'm going to say that this group has a spacing of 16 pixels between them, vertical, and I want to align them to the center. So I close my brackets, I press enter, I click, and see, now there's a padding of 16 pixels between all of these elements, and they're all aligned to the center. If I wanted to change it instead of center, probably I want to align it to the right. So R. And there you go. Now they're aligned to the right. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, it, it will take you a little bit of time to get used to. You have to be very careful with your naming conventions because those will determine how the elements behave. So if, if this is too much of a hassle for you, you can keep using the Auto Layout plugin. Uh, because I think that's uh, has a better user fr friendly interface to do all of this stuff. But I would say that the buttons thing is still really viable. Uh, but all of this thing, I don't know. Probably I I really like this kind of way of doing it with the names here, and it it, it feels very flexible. It feels very lightweight. I uh, I don't have a plugin that is taking half of my inspector. Uh, it, it's, it's all control here on the layers. So I really like that. Uh, but it, it all depends on you what you prefer. There are many other things that you can do. There are other combinations, really nerdy things. Uh, I recommend you going to the GitHub page and actually checking out all the combinations that, uh, that the creator made. This is a great plugin and I'm pretty sure this is going to be better. This is going to be improved and I'm pretty sure they're going to add a little bit of, uh, a, a more user-friendly interface. This is just the first version. But I will say just for the buttons, for the dynamic buttons, this is super viable. This is super viable. Look at that. Look at that. So download it now, my friends, and try it out. So. So that's it. Uh, hopefully, I'm pretty sure you're going to find this very useful. Uh, uh, and and leave in the comments if, I don't know, is this useful? Is there another plugin? Probably there's something here that you, another hack that you want to share. Share in the comments for other people to, to know. Uh, because there are some a lot of things that you can do with this that I didn't cover. So, so that's it. Hopefully you find this useful and thank you so much. Bye-bye.